100 meters from the amphitheater, local farmers unearth something intriguing. Edges of these expensive grand marble columns were spotted poking out of the soil. A decision was made. Digging would begin again, now led by Swiss engineer Karl Weber. Just like I am now, Weber made his way to the place they'd been discovered. The tension must have been unbearable. There was a lot at stake. If he failed to find anything, it would be a major blow to the campaign to rediscover Pompeii. Over the following days, tons of volcanic ash was shifted in the desperate hope of making a find. Then they spotted something. It became clear the columns were part of a larger structure. They continued on carefully. Then they revealed walls decorated in beautiful plasterwork. Until finally, something incredible appeared. The beautiful preserved home of a wealthy ancient Roman. Even though it's been well over 200 years since this villa was found, you can still just imagine how exciting it must have been walking through this opulent Roman house. As more and more was exposed, Weber's excitement grew. And this moment of magic as he slowly excavated, clearing away these unbelievable wall paintings, vivid, vivid colors that you would not be able to see anywhere else in the world. The interior decoration of a Roman house from 1700 years before. For the first time in centuries, you could walk around an almost intact, luxurious Roman home. Archaeologist Dr. Sophie Hay can tell me more. I just can't get over these colours. I know, isn't it amazing? The sky blue is like being sort of outside, but yet we're inside. It's sort of window straight into the Roman world. What had been unearthed was one of the largest private homes in Pompeii taking up two whole street blocks, with its own sumptuous garden complete with a long ornamental pool. It even had its own private baths. But who could possibly live in a house like this? Amazingly, they found a name. Well, we've got archaeological gold dust for this place. So here we have an image of a huge painted inscription that was on the facade of this building, and it clearly says this estate is owned by Julia Felix. And That's the smoking gun. It is. And then underneath, she's got an advert for her bath complex, which she wants to rent out. Um, she calls it an elegant bath and only for respectable people. So I like it. She doesn't want the riffraff coming here. So although she's super rich, obviously, because she's living in a place like this, she has to make a bit of money. Yeah, she needs an income to survive. Um, so she's not an elite member of society. But she really is kind of a sort of savvy entrepreneur. The inscription gave more clues about Julia's extraordinary life. She wasn't just wealthy, she was unmarried, unlike most women in Roman society, proving a single woman could be independent and successful in ancient Rome. With her cash, Julia could entertain guests, reclining on these marble benches in her elegant dining room, feasting on the best food from the region. Bird, including thrushes, asparagus, cheese, and up to 42 different types of seafood even dormice. As she and her guests took in amazing frescoes of everyday Pompeii scenes, this one shows residents shopping for bread. With all the discoveries, archaeologists have been able to tell an amazing story of a wealthy Roman woman's life. The unearthing of Julia Felix's home was phenomenal and it meant excavations would now be able to continue in the area. 
You can see how excited Weber was about it by him producing this beautiful, detailed plan. And he thought, now that he discovered this, there would be other houses and buildings nearby to explore. It's perhaps part of a, a rich settlement or town. Yet, astonishingly, no one knew where they were actually digging. Nothing had told them this house belonged to the lost city of Pompeii. But a few years later, after tireless searching, a new critical piece of evidence would emerge. 